Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Margaret, a recent graduate master from Columbia Biostat Department. I'm really honored here to have this opportunity to present our funding, and thanks to the invitation and the great help from my friends in Google for the modeling part. Together, uh, we will be presenting our study on the project disease burden of type 2 diabetes in China following the removal of the zero COVID policy. This work for the research-oriented purpose, mainly focus on understanding how pandemic policy and health crisis interplay, and how does that influence our patients with chronic disease like the diabetes. China adapts to a dynamic zero COVID strategy until December 2022. While successful in managing the pandemic outbreak, this approach leads to the underreporting of other diseases, including type 2 diabetes. Diabetes is a growing concern globally and expect to see a significant rise in the prevalence in China from 2020 to 2030. With pandemic, People with diabetes facing bigger risk, bigger risk make it really important to understand how this issue connects with us as we move away from the strict COVID rules. Due to the timing of the student paper challenge, we developed this model before 2024. Our goal was to predict a possible increase in the Omicron variant cases from November 2022 to February 2023 particularly among people with diabetes 2. We sought to estimate the rates of the vaccination, infection, hospitalization, and death, especially among diabetes patients with and without comorbidities, and to project the incidence of the new diabetes cases linked to the COVID. We utilize the age structure stochastic compartmental model to simulate the Omicron wave across 14 age groups. The SLIR model is a five classic AP and mathematic model used to simulate the spread of infectious disease in a population. It is based on the assumption that the individual in the population can be classified into four compartments, successful, latent, infectious, and removed. And our model account for the factors like the rate of vaccination, the efficiency of the vaccine, and the decrease in the immun immunity over time, and the limitation of the hospital resources. Additionally, we use the Monte Carlo method for simulating the development of the newly onset diabetes and the comorbidity in the recovered individual. For the basic model structure, part A is the SLIR transmission I mentioned, B is the disease progression, C is hospital resources constraint, D is vaccination effectiveness, E is the antiviral drug, F is outcome in the DM and the comorbidity, G is the post accurate in the DM. So the main focus in the study in the part is the part F and G. Noticeably in the part F, the comorbidity in the DM patients include a virus like the heart failure, the PVD, the liver disease, the cancer, the dementia, and so on. We did not consider the situation in children aged under 18 years old. And for G parts, we focus on the two groups. So it's the patients without diabetes who develop the new onset DM and the DM patient who experience new onset comorbidities. So now we are showing our estimates indicate that the peak of the hospitalization in general occurs around 23 January, reaching like 15.1 million individuals. The peak is also minored in the ICU admission and the fatalities as well. The plots underneath reveal a consistent pattern. The older age group exhibits a higher rate of hospital admission, ICU admission, and mortality. The strength aligned with older group, the older age group also has highest proportion of the unvaccinated individuals. Importantly, we also found out the burden on the diabetes patient was significantly higher, especially for those with comorbidities. This finding underscores the critical need for the target healthcare strategy for the areas of vulnerable population. 
In conclusion, our study highlights the effectiveness of the telehealth during the pandemic and emphasizes the need for the continued research, particularly in refining our model with new data, exploring the additional factors like the hospital capacity and the medication impacts. The flexibility of our model for global application and addressing a risk patient group is vital for optimizing the healthcare deliver post-pandemic. Because now there are greater interest in public health and post-pandemic related research, I want to initiate a portion of our discussion to the long COVID and its associates with the disease burden. Current studies suggest that the long COVID is an emerging and potentially long term condition then can impair the individuals. There is also a lack of detailed data of the disability caused by long COVID highlights the urgent need for the comprehensive research. Also, the government really needs to step up in this game and promote its resources into reaching long COVID. So we are talking now about the digging deep into how it impacts people's life and the full scope of disability will cause. We also want to consider, for instance, the comparative perspective. Some research indicates that the long COVID imposes a more substantial disability burden than even heart disease or cancer, consider its potential for the displaced of people's work and shake the labor market. Now there is a wake up call if there ever was one. Long COVID is changing the game and it's time for our approach to research and public health planning to evolve with it. Thank you so much.